RBD Defense. Out of the 2.2 billion dollars Bangladesh has allocated for 20 J10Cs, 820 million dollars is allocated towards training, spare parts, and weapons. For training, they just need to buy some simulator equipment and send over a team to China. At most, this will cost 20 to 30 million dollars. Uh, spare parts, depending on how much they get, 100 to 200 million dollars. So we can expect that at least 500 to 600 million dollars is going to be allocated specifically for buying weapons. Although this is a good budget, we still have to be smart with our money. So in this video, I will talk about what Bangladesh must buy, what is a necessity and what Bangladesh should consider. Let's begin with air-to-air -air missiles. Number one priority goes to the PL-15. 150 km range on the export version, impressive combat record, one of the best BVR missiles in the whole world. The PL-15 should take the most priority in the entire weapons package. It will serve as the primary weapon against all current and future Indian fighter jets. The sword for Bangladesh Air Force and our greatest tool for air superiority. Next air-to-air -air missile will be the PL-12. I know some of you might wonder what is the point of buying both the PL-15 and the PL-12. After all, didn't the PL-15 make the PL-12 obsolete? The answer to that is no and the reason for that is attrition. The PL-15 is going to be Bangladesh's primary BVR missile and it will be given top purchase priority in this entire weapons package. No debate on that. But if we shoot our PL-15s at every single enemy aerial asset, then we will run out very quickly. And in an all-out war, attrition is a necessity. Let me give you an example. Let's say a Bangladesh Air Force J-10C is on a combat patrol and is equipped with both the PL-15 and the PL-12. The J-10C spots an Israeli-made Indian Air Force UAV like a Searcher or a Huron or something. And this UAV is 80 kilometers away. Instead of shooting a top-of-the-line missile like a PL-15 at it, we can just shoot a PL-12 because there is a 0% chance that this thing will ever dodge any BVR missile. During a war, we will have to shoot down a lot of enemy aerial assets, not just fighter jets. And to do that, we need a missile that is capable, cost-effective and has good enough range. The PL-12 ticks all three of these boxes. All of our jets will carry the PL-15, but shooting the PL-15 at literally every single enemy aerial asset is not feasible. The PL-15 will be used against advanced enemy fighter jets and the PL-12 will serve as the secondary BVR missile. The last air-to-air -air missile will be the PL-10 for short-range combat. The bulk of India's fighter jets are Russian Su-30s and MiG-29s. These have mediocre BVR capabilities but have high-level maneuverability, which is a big factor in close-range combat. These Russian-made jets are not going to fight our J-10Cs at long distance where they don't have any advantage. They are going to try and get close where they do have the advantage. Our goal will be to take them out at long range with the PL-15, then the PL-12. If they manage to get past both of those, then the PL-10 will take care of them. At no distance will we allow them to have the advantage even in close range. The PL-10 is either the best air-to-air -air missile or the second best air-to-air -air missile. China even uses the PL-10 on their fifth generation J-20 stealth aircraft. And with that, the air-to-air -air missiles are covered. PL-15 for air superiority, PL-12 for attrition, PL-10 for close range, and we will be skipping the PL-8. For the air-to-surface missiles, the CM-400 AKG takes priority. The CM-400 AKG is a family of air-to-surface hypersonic missiles made by China. This year, it gained a lot of attention when Pakistan used it against an Indian S-400 battery. Pakistan claims that their CM-400 AKG took out an Indian S-400 radar, and India claims that they had received intelligence about the attack plan and moved their S-400 away from the location. Regardless of who is telling the truth, one thing is for certain is that India cannot stop the CM-400 AKG. If they could, then they wouldn't need to move their air defense out of the way. 
So the CM400 AKG will take top priority in this category and will be used against high value targets. For missile attrition in this category, the CM802 AKG air launched cruise missile is the best choice. The reasoning here is similar to the PL-12, but the CM-802 AKG is not as important as the uh, PL-12 because glide bombs can be used for the same attacks. Glide bombs are of course incredibly cost effective, but the CM-802 AKG has more range than the glide bombs, it is faster than the glide bombs, and its uh, targeting and navigation system is of course a lot more advanced. Although glide bombs are more inexpensive than the CM802 AKG, the CM802 AKG is a lot more cheap than the CM400 AKG. This makes the CM802 AKG a good secondary air-to-land missile for mid-level targets. Let me give you an example. We will use our CM400 AKGs on high value targets that have a lot of protection like air bases, bunkers, command headquarters, air defense batteries, etc. Things like that. Of course, we won't just use the CM400 AKG on these attacks. These sort of attacks, you need a lot of saturation to overwhelm the air defenses. So alongside the CM400 AKG, we can shoot the CM802 AKG. Alongside, we can shoot the glide bombs that, ha uh, that have that range to get to the target. And along that, we should also shoot uh, kamikaze drones for max saturation. But that's for high level targets. For medium level targets like, let's say, a logistics hub, a fuel depot, a smaller army base or even a temporary base. For these sort of targets, we don't need to shoot a CM400 AKG. We can just shoot a few CM802 AKGs and along that we shoot the glide bombs that are in range and kamikaze drones for uh, saturation, giving us attrition because if we shoot the CM400 AKG at every single target, we are going to run out quickly. We have to keep those for the important targets. For the rest, we can uh, go down the list like that. For medium level stuff, we can have the CM802 AKG as the main missile and for low value targets with low protection or no protection we can just use glide bombs. Speaking of glide bombs, we already use the LS6 family of precision guided glide bombs. Uh, we need to buy a lot more of these for the 20 J10Cs. These have absolutely amazing damage to money ratio and they are the foundation of any air to ground strikes. Alongside the LS6, we should also get the YLV-501. The difference between the LS6 and the YLV-501 is that the LS6 is a conversion kit that turns regular bombs, sometimes called dummy bombs or dumb bombs, into precision guided glide bombs while the YLB501 is a purpose-built glide bomb. So it's basically better in every way. It has more range, it's more stealthy, uh, better guidance. The payload is the same on this and the LS6. They're both uh, 500 kg. Uh, the LS6 also has a 250 kg version. The LS6 is for uh, any attack where it can be utilized, while this is for more uh, specialized missions, you could say. Both of these glide bombs are very good money for value. You know, this is the age of glide bombs. Regular bombs are becoming more and more uh, obsolete by the year. Maybe obsolete is too harsh of a word, but having the, our valuable fighter jets fly directly over a target uh, to drop a bomb is, of course, very risky. This means that we can only use the regular bombs on uh, like inside of our airspace where we have air superiority or in very shallow enemy territory. But they're still not obsolete yet, so we should still buy some 250 and 500 kilogram regular bombs. For anti-radiation strikes, uh, of course, we already have the, or we will buy the CM400 AKG, but the CM400 AKG requires very specific coordinates. So we should also get a dedicated anti-radiation missile. The best choice is the YJ-91, which is China's most commonly used anti-radiation missile. Uh, it has a 120 km range, Mach 3.5 speed, just a standard uh, anti-radiation missile. In case any of you don't know what an anti-radiation missile is or what it does, anti-radiation missiles look for the radiation emitted by uh, 
radars from air defenses or just radars in general and take them out. They're basically missiles that are specifically designed to take out radars. Now for the anti-ship category, uh, some of you might not like what I have to say, but you know, there really isn't much point in buying, you know, a lot of or any uh, anti-ship missiles for our JTNCs because our maritime surveillance capabilities right now are very weak. And without good maritime surveillance, it really doesn't matter what we have. There is an anti-ship variant of the CM400 AKG, but again, just like the land version, it needs very specific coordinates. For that, you need good maritime surveillance. Other than that, there's also the C802 AK, which is the air-launched version of the YJ-83 anti-ship missile that our, uh, a lot of our ships use. I really don't have much to say about this category. I'm not going to say that anything here is necessary or that it should even be considered. Uh, China did show a missile called the YJ-15, a supersonic anti-ship missile. But since they revealed it this year at uh, this year's Victory Parade, they're not going to be selling that for a few more years at least. That's all I have to say about the anti-ship category. I think the money would just be better spent on air-to-air -air missiles, air-to-ground missiles and bombs and all that. Lastly, these are not weapons, but they are still equally as important. Uh, we need to buy electronic warfare pods search and tracking pods, targeting and navigation and attack pods. All of the pods are necessary, but the electronic warfare pods are especially necessary. And with that, we have covered everything. Uh, I will say that the bulk of the budget should go to air-to-air -air missiles, specifically the PL-15. Thank you for watching the video till the end. Uh, if you want to support the channel, subscribe to the channel. We're getting close to 4,000 subscribers like the video uh, if you have any opinions leave them down in the comments and i will see you in the next video